hi, uh, Rob Stevens here. Um, Rob Stevens here, and I welcome to my talk. Some of you may have may know of my work or have remember it, and uh, a lot of you haven't. But a lot has changed in the last year. One of the changes is these, right? Other changes, pandemic, end of the world, you know, all of that stuff. So I'm making some art. So that's what this talk is about: is what happened to what, what's happening to my artwork. This is my first YouTube movie, so be patient. But it, I, you know, I'll try not to Ken Burns it up too much. I will be able to tie this into some of my past work, explain what's different and what kind of cluster of themes I'm going for. So let's start. Okay, so look, I left Des Moines in 2018 um, in December. So right before the new year, um, for health reasons, uh, my MS, uh, multiple sclerosis, had progressed really fast. You know, I went from a cane to a walker and now wheelchair. You know, my legs just seemed to be too long for me. I started making some... Uh, computer work because it was within my ability to do um, physically. I, I made these people who were designated sick, people who were alone, people who sort of felt like they were contagious, that people avoided. The feeling you get being isolated, you, you feel sort of marked, that people treat you differently. Uh, these images are about how Cloister 2019 felt. I was feeling very alone and, you know, sorry for myself, mostly. So the way I depicted the germs, I, I like the idea of them looking like melted candy or flowers or appealing in some way, sort of like jewels. Um, so and that's what I, so I, in some of these paintings I used like maraschino cherries um, as the germs or like candy or floral patterns or SpaghettiOs, which is super gross. And this idea of the germs being pretty, it comes up later in the work. I've used it in past work. So I've used that sort of thing with my love letters where the flowers are intending to look like bullet holes or thoughts of love. I started doing these drawings of if I had ghosts for hands. A lot of it is about sort of the solid pencil not being able to grasp it or the pencil being ghostly so I can't grasp it and the frustration behind it. It's a lot like uh, the Greek myths of Narcissus or Echo where well, narcissist falls in love with an image, but he can't touch that image because it's just the water, it's just the reflection. Same with the idea of having ghosts for hands, is you can't really move anything, right? In March, there was already talk about quarantine. It was already happening in some of the elite coastal cities, I think. I had felt homebound and shut off um, for a month or two already. Started making images of my friends. Um, this is a Rachel Boozy, you know, all geared up for the pandemic. It felt really perverse. Uh, the more that people were shel sheltering in place and the more social my world became and less closed off. I don't think it's that unusual that other people were coming to grips with their situation and redefining themselves in this age of pandemic, civil unrest, social collapse, fascism, hell, even murder hornets. Um, so this new work that I was making is like a, a fever dream where my tenuous connections to the world I sort of masticate together in a nightmare slurry. 
you know, so pieces of news, propaganda, theory, pop culture, horror movies, art history, medical jargon, um, they all sort of blur together. So I got through my general boilerplate talk about what this work is about. I want to look at a few specific sequences or a few specific items in much more detail. First thing, it's really obvious that uh, one of my influences is Northern Renaissance painting. What I like about it is that everything in these paintings is saturated with meaning, that there's lots of details and all of these details tell you something. So whether it's a burnt out candle or a lit candle or an unbloomed flower were put there specifically to tell you about the situation. The Arnold Feening Wedding by Van Eyck is a good example. In this painting, each object represents something that one of the couple brings to the relationship. The oranges are the wealth that is brought in from the outside. So distance, hard to get fruit. And the dog represents loyalty, fidelity, sexual appetite. On the Marode altarpiece, there's a picture of Joseph making a mousetrap. And the nails can be read as foreshadowing the crucifixion. So when I do a painting uh, with someone holding, let's say, a, a pumpkin latte, um, you know, I, I put it there because I, I am judging that character. In this piece, I depicted a Amy Cooper clutching a pumpkin latte as she reclines in an odalesque position, an unfettered boat adrift on a sea of white tears. I like the idea of using artifacts or props as ways to express opinions about the person holding the object. That we approach every situation reading symbols into objects we are always approaching things through the lens of class or race or gender or sexual orientation or disability status. So it's hard for me to approach this drawing without seeing into it the history and the use of imperiled white womanhood as an excuse to criminalize black bodies. So these sort of thoughts are going through my mind when I was constructing this. This is another image I created probably towards the end of May, sometime in April. And it depicts a nurse who is checking the news on her iPhone. I was thinking of a few different paintings, one of them being Botticelli's Primavera. And she, in that painting, Clarice um, is vomiting flowers. Um, as she becomes spring. So I like the idea of the germs spreading being like flowers. Um, I use it a lot. Every time I put flowers in this series, usually they do double duty as flowers or as crosses. Crosses, flowers, germs are all about the same. And I combine that with uh, Death and the Maiden image. Uh, usually Death and the Maiden paintings tend to be about contrast. You're contrasting young, soft skin to leathery, hard, you know, uh, decay. Here's another early piece that I made in May, um, and it's a riff on the Dance of Death paintings. To me, those paintings seem to be about the idea of taking the small moments of joy and beauty that you can within a crisis. This painting depicts kids playing Ring Around the Rosie, which is also a dance about the plague, you know, surrounding a masked plague doctor. There is an onlooker of this dance who is distracted by playing Animal Crossing, one of the uh, games that a lot of people I know have been using to cope with the pandemic. In the background, there are uh, shelters and they look like medical shelters. In fact, you'll see that I use flowers, germs, crosses, medical crosses, religious crosses. Kind of conflate them all together. They have overlapping or contrasting meanings, so they're complicated. The stern doctor figure in the middle, is it a guardian? Is it a shepherd? Is it benevolent? 
Is it malicious? It's hard to tell. Same kind of way that you would have a relationship with a dentist. Similar to another piece I made about school. This image, I have kids playing Ring Around the Rosie, but instead there it's replaced by a merry-go-round. So they're going in a circle, and this is about schools reopening. It's parallel to stocks, holding witches in the background. You can read this about the school to prison pipeline or about the cruelty of opening schools for both the students and the teachers slash witches. Both of these paintings uh, are about youth and innocence versus sort of the industrial hardness of culture that would devour them if it helped their bottom line. Contempt for human life revealed in this pandemic is chilling. I was reading a book called The Four Futures and this book posits a thought experiment about the four possible social structures or societies we might have after capitalism collapses. And the, the two factors are the rise of automation to produce things and the growing scarcity of resources thanks to climate change. The worst possible future talked about in this book has both a very high scarcity and a very high hierarchy that there are very few people who have power and control over those limited resources. In the past, concessions were made to workers because they were needed to produce. They were tolerated as a necessary expense. They're just surplus bodies that are draining resources. Public health issues are in conflict with the private interest and class interest always wins. The leaders will literally do anything to save themselves, but give up their power. Here is a, a poetic image I dreamed about a while ago. A fire engine is shrieking down the street. Its siren is shrill, loud. Its ladders are ablaze. Itself is on fire. Who's gonna save you? So who profits from all of this? I've been making a set of paintings based on the ship of fool paintings, about rafts that are drifting down rivers of blood. You know, this is about leaders who give stimulus packet to essential items like the Carnival Cruise Lines. Here's a picture of Marie Antoinette making a cake offering. It's similar to these meager offering of financial assistance to regular people during the plague. Here's one where she's tempting workers to demand to go back to work in a pool party of blood. The kind of people who become billionaires are considered uh, heroes. I also created a body of work uh, about the protest, the white tears, the idea of white centering. And here's a few images from that is the comparison of Purell to holy water. In another one, I depict two women who are crying into holy water so that their white tears become the cure. The women are from two politically different stripes. One is wearing a MAGA hat, the other is wearing uh, a women's march hat but they both cry the same. This man clutches his Michelle Obama book, Becoming, to show that he is one of the good ones and isn't responsible for any of this. I had to wrap it up real fast because 15 minutes goes fast. I still have other things I wanna talk about, so I'll probably make another movie. And um, so you like and subscribe. Also, you can find out more of my images uh, at my blog, also listed below. Thank you so much. It's been helpful to me, and hopefully you got something out of it, you know, that sort of thing.